Welcome to the Seraphine Podcast. I am Seraphine Arocha, and today we have a guest that is back and bigger than ever because she is added to her team. We are back with Chloe Elise. Welcome, welcome from Deeper Than Money. Thank you so much for having me again. Oh, I'm so glad to have you. And we have the man beside the woman. I don't like any behind or in front. He's right beside her. This is Shay Gutman. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. I am so glad to have you here and I am so excited for this episode because I like to interview what I like to call your power couples. Um, we've had a couple out on here today, or not today, in the last couple months. Today, we have a couple that frankly, you know, when I had you on the podcast, I wanted to know more about him. Because I do believe that in this day and age, as women who are kind of coming into a forefront where it's no longer about... I need I need someone's shoulders to climb on top. You're your own shoulders. It's pretty cool that you're going to you're going to stand right beside your woman. So, let's talk a little bit about what just you two announced. What was the big announce aside from being engaged and in love and getting <laughs> married? What is the big announcement that you guys had? Yeah, so we just officially announced a little bit, a little bit over a month ago or two months ago, that Shay is coming on to the Deeper Than Money team full time. So we're so excited about that. That is so cool. All right. That's a big decision. I mean, that's a big decision, especially <clears throat> during the time of COVID. Um, I have all the faith in this woman as not only your fiance, but an entrepreneur that's making some great money. Mm -hmm. But... Was there any, any kind of, uh, like when you made that decision, was that a little nerve wracking for you? You know, I feel like I've been a team member longer than the last month, October 9th or whatever, when we announced it, just because I've always been obviously by her side since she started this and supporting her and doing some random projects for her along the way that I've just seen her grind and do all this. And again, she's done it by herself that I just felt like what I could contribute could help take the team to the next level. Um, again, not that she couldn't have done it without me, um, but I feel like we like to do different things. And again, what she contributes is a little bit different. And so we're kind of doing what we're most passionate about now um, to again, take us to that next level. And uh, we also adding several other team members that are falling into areas that they're passionate about as well. So there was zero doubt. Uh, it's a big step to, I think, work with your significant other because you try to find that <coughs> that balance right of um when do you cut it off when do you stop talking business and you know move into your relationship and that's something i think we've worked on for a very long time even before i came on is when we're on walks we catch yourself talking business and how to uh, do things better so i think that is the not the struggle but the the improvement that we we continually are working on is that that work-life balance together so so talk me uh, talk to me a little bit about what you did beforehand because you had a big business background mm -hmm. correct um so what was your what was your background first so, yep so i've always been in sales and in missouri i've been in kansas city i was a business development manager for a company in overland park um and we were just talking about this be before the show started but uh, we were sitting in the the company banquet, and I received a couple awards and like salesman of the year, a couple small awards. Yeah. You received salesman of the year, won multiple quarters in leading in sales, and I he receives his awards. I'm the you know doting fiance, and he comes back, and I lean over, and I'm like why don't you do sales for me? Like you're over here making literally millions for, um, for these companies in, in these high ticket sales. And I was like, how, why aren't you doing this for me? Why aren't, why aren't we using your skills here? Mm -hmm. And I've always loved entrepreneurism and I love what she's been doing. And I see her, you know, I wake up and throw my bag on and walk out of the house and she's waking up at, at 10 and, and she, she grinds. <laughs> Come on, 10 a.m. You start working at 10. She I grinds. Start, I start, I like wake up at seven with you. She has her bonbons and she stretches out. I know out. you make me sound like a dog. I roll out of bed at 10. At 10. But then some, yeah, some yeah, night yeah, she's working yeah, till, to, like the other night she was working before we went on vacation, it was midnight and we had a 4 a.m. No, we had to wake up at whatever, five or six. Yeah. Um, and she was still working. And so she does grind. It's just when you are owning your own business, you can grind when you're really feeling it. You don't work yeah. that necessarily eight to five. Um, 
didn't mean to say that she's no i know you did we're giving you we're giving you shit (laughs) gotta give it gotta give you a little ah. Uh. (laughs) so so for you i was there any pause of like like i mean he's quitting his job and he's believing in you so honey you gotta you gotta keep it going so did you feel a a little bit more pressure or did you feel relief like yeah yeah so i definitely um i mean i'm very obviously into finances and so it it had to be a smart move on paper right it wasn't i'm very big on and there's some people who are like i believed in the vision so we're just gonna jump and the net will appear Mm -hmm. and i think that's awesome but for me i it had to be smart on paper so these were conversations that i talked to my account about. I talked to my financial advisor about, I talked to um, my business coach and, and, and the people in my life that I know are going to give me that not like, oh, sweetie, we believe in you, but like true on paper of like, this makes sense or it doesn't. And so, and I did the same thing when I was leaving corporate. And honestly, I, I don't think I had that big fearful moment of like, holy shit, this is real. I definitely had that moment. So I retired my mom from her corporate job in May. And I had that moment then where I was like, I'm responsible for people's salary. Like I'm responsible for their healthcare. I'm responsible for like, that's so, that's so big. And so definitely had that moment then. And and I, I feel like when we announced it, I really was like, well, that day I was like, this is real. Like people know about it now. And, um, but I also at the same time, I, I definitely have that very visionary mindset to where instead of focusing on like, oh, the, our expenses are growing of like bringing on new hires and stuff. My philosophy is like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to bring Shay on, which he's already done in the, however long that he's, he's been working for me. But I mean, he makes, he makes his own income basically, right? Like he's bringing in so much extra revenue. He's like fixing so many things that that were, you know, not so great that he made better or were okay. And he made amazing. And so, um, I think if you have that mindset, instead of focusing on the like, whoa, expenses are rising, but instead of being like, when you grow a team, you grow more revenue, you grow the client experience and all these other wonderful things. It's an expansive, um, mindset instead of a stunted mindset, if that makes sense. Have you, either one of you had to have tough conversations like, Chloe, this isn't working. I know that you're stuck on this and you're fixated and you think that this is going to bring in revenue, but it doesn't or vice versa. Like, I love your idea, honey, but slow your roll. Like I, have you had those yet? (laughs) Definitely. I'll I'll take this one. Yeah. Um, she's very, what she was talking about. She gets these ideas and she just wants to do them. Right. And, and our, our VA who's just been recently promoted, Natalie, she is incredible. Chloe will text her and she'll have it done the next day and the new product ideas and all these things. And I feel like I'm more, uh, reserved and more, um, numbers based. And that's why we balance each other so well, but also I like being a leader as well. And, and it, I've had to take a step back and be like, okay, she's the boss. Um, at the end of the day, what she says goes, um, but she, we do a great job of, um, balancing each other, but we've had tough conversations Mm of, um, you know, I, I don't think this is going to work or, or it's more, you know, or she's telling me like, I, I, I like that idea, but let's wait on that. Yeah. Or, um, you know, we've had a lot of tough conversations, but I, I think we've done a great job of, yeah. of working those out. And especially in the beginning, he, he touched on this earlier, but this kind of goes right along with it is that work-life balance of he would do something that I didn't like during the day. And I would say, why did you do that? I did not, like, I didn't say you could do that or this. And, um, and then at 5 PM, like, oh, let's go to dinner. I'm still pissed. I'm still mad. And, and oh. so really having to like bridge that gap of like, Okay, sure. And our joke is that, you know, I'm the boss from 8 to 5. He's the boss 5 p.m. after. That's our joke that we say all the time. But um, so really, I mean, and we're partners the whole time, but but we joke about that. And so really having to have a mutual respect for each other of, okay, business, it's not business in the morning. Like it's not business time yet. We're going to just talk about us and uh, and other things or after just really dropping it and um, and handling it as um handling it as business acquaintances instead of handling it like you know being a little catty because we're also like dating it's so interesting to me too that you got into bed with each other in business Mm -hmm. before you put the ring on it and i mean that's like you have i guess you have you were working kind of together you have the ring but you're not married yet no so that's the other thing is is that 
I I would think that you really have to abide by mm -hmm. this is business. This is relationship. You guys just came back from a great vacation in Cabo. I live vicariously through your experience out there. Um, was there a time where either one of you looked at each other and go, eh, zitta, ba, da, 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 this is vacation time? <laughs> Um, or was there, or was there, did your creative juices get flowing? Cause that's the other thing that when your brain gets relaxed, all of a sudden it's like you start going and you have to like, oh, this is vacation. Both, honestly. This vacation, I will say we did a great job yeah. of- Better than we ever have. We, we had our laptops out early on before our, we had some friends come down, but we did a great job of just turning it off. And generally when we're on vacation, we were in Colorado a couple months ago and we just caught ourselves having our laptops out and talking business all the time. This was so nice to just turn it off and not really do any business and mm -hmm. have our team pick up the back end while we're gone. Um, just a quick point on that. We've done a great job of creating kind of a, a schedule for us as well. And, and G introduced us to F45 where we work out every morning now, and that's been great for us to get in a workout routine. We come back, we'll walk the dogs, you know, shower, have breakfast, and then we start our day. Uh, and it gives us a a great opportunity to, to slow down before we just jump right into our day, right? And, and things get crazy and mm -hmm. uh, we have some us time and then, then we go at it. But uh, that back to the vacation, we did a great job of, of really yeah. turning it off this time. And I think it's fun creative wise. Like th the times we talked about business, I think it was twofold. One, a lot of it used to be that when we were on vacation, especially when it was just me, my business was me. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't, if I wasn't working, DMs weren't being answered, emails weren't being answered, clients weren't being served. And so now that we have a whole team of people, our team is taking care of things. And so it's it's not only that nothing pauses, but also it's the it's a comfort of knowing that everything is still being taken care of and they're in such great hands because we have such an awesome team. Um, and we also are, are now so forward thinking. In the beginning of business, it's things are so reactive because entrepreneurship is like, I mean, you're just like, it's like dodgeball, like balls are being thrown at you. You're just like trying to catch things, you know, you, I'm Googling things, I'm learning things. And so now we're moving into a very proactive stage where when we sit down and talk about business, we're talking about the next five years instead of how do we get through this week without any more like, you know, uh, dropping the ball on anything. Yeah. And so that's also huge because the team is catching th those things. So when we are on vacation, we're talking about it, we're at breakfast and we're like, oh my gosh, what about this great idea for this thing down the road? And we're just dreaming together instead of being like, did you send this email? Did you do this? Which is where kind of it used to be. Now, going forward into the holiday season, I'm sure a lot of our viewers are deeper than money. Clients, listeners to the podcast, um, it's, a, it's a pretty scary time right now. And whether you were red or blue voting, um, the economy is hurting. And I'm sure there's a lot of people looking to you for advice. Mm -hmm. um, going into the holiday season, have you guys uh, shifted a little bit with, with how you are tackling some of these questions, DMs, inquiries about what the fuck am I doing yeah. in this current f financial state? Because it is quite different mm -hmm. than it was when you first began. And now that we have a new president, it's going to be a whole different, it's a whole different deal. So um, what can Deeper Than Money viewers, listeners, and then people who may be right now listening and going, Oh shit, who is this woman? Can she tell me what to do with my life because my account is going lower and lower? Um, what's some of the things that you're gonna be bringing into Deeper Than Money that yeah. you can share? Yeah, so I think, I think the biggest thing, and, and for me this is so comforting, is that financial, like financial literacy, financial management, the, the basics and the foundation doesn't change with who's in office, with what's going on, in our world. And, um, and so whatever's going on, we want to make sure we know the basics and we want to make sure we have those down to a T. So then, because, um, you know, when you're in survival mode, we, I think we talked about mm -hmm. this last, last time I was on the podcast, when you're in survival mode, you can't be going outside of like, Hey, I want to, I really am passionate about this policy or this person in office. I'm going to donate there because you can't pay your bills. Yeah. Right. And you can't, um, you know, you can't go and make those additional, th those gifts those two families in need or to whatever whatever you are really passionate about and want to see moving when you're in survival mode and so 
that's a basic of we always we want all of our clients to have those financial literacy foundations to where they can then be in thrive thrive mode not survival mode thriving mode to where they can take a step back and say how can i be um, a really active consumer right especially around the holidays everyone is trying to sell to you between black friday and christmas everyone's trying to sell to you and a lot of times when we're just sitting back and reacting mm -hmm. we're like oh well i need to buy this from this instagram ad and this tv and this and, and they don't realize that these ads are targeting you based on what you're consuming and how you you show up on your phone, how you show up on social media, what you're buying. And so the more that you can be really, really, really intentional about what you're doing and, and also be really intentional about how you're spending correlates to stress, right? Like a lot of people are really stressed right now um, or just apprehensive or just a, a little of like what's going to happen bracing themselves. And so the more that we can be intentional and instead of saying I'm really stressed about the election, or I'm really stressed about what's happening or what will happen. So I'm going to go online shop to feel better. Mm -hmm. And instead, if we can realize that, hey, that's not going to solve the problem. Instead, let's let's get back to the basics and, and spend in ways that feel really good, but not spend in ways that try to patch other things that are going in, going on. What do you two think in terms of someone is going to spend money right now? What are, give me three things that you're like, these are wise investments during, especially during the holidays mm -hmm. or, um, or things that, um, you want to and give me give me three that you want to avoid. Like these are these are not the time to spend. These are not the things to spend it on. Yeah. Um. So I mean, when it comes to I'll, I'll start here. When it comes to like investments, right? A lot of people I get asked this all the time of like the market, the market. What do we do? I take my money out. What do I do? And the biggest thing is that when it comes to literal investments in, in your retirement or or non retirement investments you have to play the long game. This is not, oh, the market's down, take my money out. You have to play the long game um, and just be really content um, with playing the long game. So that's number one, is if you do not freak out about what's going on um, in the market, other really just tangible investments. Um, I always say a great a great thing to be thinking about right now is Black Friday is great when you're an intentional shopper. Mm -hmm. So for example, last year on Black Friday, um, there were so many deals on bulk items that we, well, we were supposed to be getting married in August of this year. And so last Black Friday, we bought a ton of stuff for our wedding, which was awesome. Um, but a lot of people go into Black Friday being like, all right, stores, you tell me what to buy instead of having a list, going to it and then buying. Um, and so if you have the financial means right now to be looking ahead into next year of what are some things in bulk or what are some bigger purchases that we're going to be um, looking out for? I know um, my sister, they just bought a home and they're renovating it. And so she one of the things she's looking at is like some big house things right some big house supplies that they might not need for a few months but it you know they can get a really great deal on it so that'd be number two be really intentional um and then the third one is this isn't specifically in spending but having a conversation a very real conversation with your family about how you want to handle the holidays mm -hmm. a lot of times there's so much pressure at, or in relationships um early on we we were both so invested in paying off our own debt that we didn't do gifts for Christmas because our priority was paying off debt and doing those other things. But I would have felt, and I'd love to hear your perspective on this, but early on the first year we were dating, if we wouldn't have said that, I would have been like, well, I have to get him a gift because he needs a gift for me. But when we sat down, you were like, that's awesome. We'll write each other a card and that'll be really special. Yeah, absolutely. And we had the conversation with your family this year too. Yeah. Um, we went, we had some big gifts last year, but we just had the the talk this year that we're just going to take it easier and get some we're each going to have a person that we get gifts for and um just be more intentional and yeah. and not spend a bunch of money this year and put pressure on other people mm -hmm. um, where we show up and with a big gift and someone else doesn't and they feel you know we just don't want to have that so i think the communication between the gift giving is huge um but yeah, I mean, oh, those three were, are spot on. I was going to say all three of those as well. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit more shade to maybe things that, I mean, I, I have to say a lot of, not that we want to put women and men in different groups, but, you know, when I, when I think about the pressure my husband feels, 
about things that he feels like he has to provide or buy mm -hmm. um, for the family. And I think women are a little bit, they can have those discussions a little bit easier just because we are a little bit more the emotional sex and we, we think a little bit more about it is deeper than money, right? But money is money. And, you know, so speaking from a male perspective, um, being a provider, what are things that you think are like, come on, guys, we don't have to put our money into this for the holidays? Uh, do you mean more as like individual gifts for people? Yeah, yeah anything, anything that you can th think of. And again, you can th you can speak broader too, because I think a lot of people are getting like, they're getting nervous. I mean, they're thinking, I mean, I had some people yesterday at, at a dinner talk about taxes and they're like, uh oh, like what should mm -hmm. I be putting money off to the side now mm -hmm. that now that we have a new president in the house? And I'm like, well, we've got a lot of Republicans in there, but then also holiday gifts. I mean, there's, you know, people want to go buy a million electronics. Sure. So I guess I, yeah. I guess I'm just getting your opinion of overall the things that come to mind. You're like, God, this is the knee jerk reaction. Sure, sure. So this year we've just seen a lot of people coming into DTM, and this is before I even started. Again, I was doing a lot of sales and other things for the, the company. So many people coming to us in panic mode, like, what do I do now? I'm, I, I'm on the verge of losing my job. I'm on the verge of um, getting a pay cut or hour cut or whatever. And it comes to the same point as like, well, if we plan ahead a little bit, when something like this comes up again, we're not in that fight or flight mode. Um, and, and so maybe use this opportunity instead of buying a TV or a new car, unless you need those things, right? Again, capitalize on the deals if you absolutely need those things. Um, but maybe take it as an opportunity to take the money you're going to get for gifts and put it in an emergency fund or um, to put it in some sort of investment or just buy spend half of what, than what you were normally going to spend on gifts. Because I think there's so much more... Um, anxiety around the holidays this year just because people may not have a lot of extra money to spend on gifts but still feel the pressure to um, and I think you're right I think maybe men do feel the pressure from women just because a lot of women do like the jewelry and flash and men yeah. do like that too but I just feel like um, well they think that they're again deeper than money if I he gives me the the tennis bracelet it means he loves me it, right they, and they it, put a dollar amount on it and, and sometimes love is having that conversation of saying um, let's Let's look out for each other and, yeah. you know, like you two had. Absolutely. And yeah, we've, we've done that for a while. Again, we maybe got something small for gifts and use that money to pay off debt because we understood, well, in two years, we can go to, you know, Cabo for my birthday or we can do those things and sacrifice that early on. Um, so I think communication and, and just really uh, uh, the communication is the biggest thing because that's going to relieve so much mm -hmm. anxiety around your partner who may feel like they have to go big on the holidays when you really don't need or want something like that, but they feel like they need to provide that for you. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing, and I, I, this is the number one thing, the number one piece of advice that I give couples is that you don't have to agree with what I do with my money. You have to agree with your partner. And th the biggest thing that you need to do is have the same priorities. And I think that's been the biggest win in our relationship from a financial perspective is that it, it you know, you and I both are on the same page about like, for example, the Capo thing, we value experiences more than we value other things. Neither of us values driving a nice car. We drive a Ford Focus with a hundred and 30,000 miles on it. We love our yeah. car, you know, but there might be a couple where they both really value a nice car and that's where they would rather have their money than something else. There's not a right or wrong answer. There's not a no. right or wrong answer. And so many people look to me and they're like, can I buy this designer bag? And I'm like, they're like, would you? And I'm like, you shouldn't care what I'm doing because I don't value the designer bag, but that doesn't mean there's something wrong with you getting it. Totally. If that's where you value having your money, that's awesome. There's no right or wrong. And I think so often that it's a two way street. There's the people who um, they'll say like, I can't have that because I can't spend my money there. Depriving. And so exactly. Depriving. They deprive yeah. themselves. But then there's also the people who say, oh, I don't like designer bags. So I'm somehow better than the people and, and, yeah. and really shit on other people's decisions. And I, I see this a lot where I will see people idolizing this frugality of like, oh, well, I, I would never spend my money there almost as if it's like it just being disrespectful to other people. And I always say like, that is a slippery slope because you 
spending less, it, that's not idolizing it. We should not idolize whether you spend more. We shouldn't say, ha ha, I spent so much more than you or ha ha, I spent so much less. We should celebrate when we are spending in alignment with, I bought this one thing and I love it and I'm so happy and cool, you bought that thing and you, you love that and that's awesome. But so often there's a problem of either, you know, shitting on other people's decisions or, oh, she bought a designer bag and she's super cool. I need to buy a designer bag. So I'm cool. And so the biggest thing is that you have to figure out what your priorities are for yourself. And then as a couple, figure out what your collective priorities are and then spend in alignment. That comparison, will stop. Comparison, yeah. it can all, it can be the devil. I mean, yes. it really can. I used to do that big time. I used yeah. to be talk about keeping that. up with the Joneses a lot. Like friends, we get a new car. I'd be jealous. And, um, or a brand new house or whatever and, and it is a slippery slope because you're you're constantly going to be playing catch up and you're constantly having that that um that jealousy and it's it's not a fun way to live well and you're always thinking about lacking instead of in abundance yes. and mm -hmm. i i've had to really change my view because you know i i didn't have a lot of money for the longest time and and it feels good to be comfortable now but i'm always looking in terms of what is an abundance in my relationship my foundation of my home and then i also think about if something were to be taken away what's still going to be there mm -hmm. because again things come and go money comes money goes but what do i have an abundance around me to keep my foundation firm so that I can make some good decisions going forward, even when I'm in, in that lack mm -hmm. um, and not feeling, letting it consume me. I have a question for you guys, because this was something I was so afraid to ask because there was so much embarrassment and shame associated with me for so long was having health insurance, um, going into the holidays um, with this kind of like, that health insurance that's barely getting me by, the fear factor of like, what do I do if I got sick? Um, we are going into what President-elect Biden says is a dark winter. Um, that doesn't make anyone feel good. So I guess going into um, this dark winter uh, with the chance of illness, um, What's your advice for people who may not have a nest egg or have good insurance? What do they need to do now? Awesome. That's a great question. So, um, oh gosh, so much to say. So the first thing is really as, as much as possible, I will preach us forever emergency fund. Even if it, I don't care if you have nothing and you make it a hundred dollars, I don't care if you have a thousand dollars and maybe growing it to 2000 or whatever you can do, but having something in the back pocket, because so often we're, we spend so much of our time anxious for the what ifs that if we just had that little, little pot of gold in case something did happen, we wouldn't have to live with that constant stress and that constant anxiety. So the more the anything that you could put in an emergency fund is, is incredible. Um, the second thing is, and this is more from a health perspective, but our, a lot of times our healthcare system is reactive, right? You got sick. Now we need to fix it. And so often we don't realize what a money saving tip it is to care about nurturing your health right now, right? Oh, I feel okay, but I'm going to do things, you know, maybe it's taking supplements, maybe it is um, going to the gym, maybe it is making sure you're drinking enough water, right? Um, and, and and those things are so important, but a lot of times we don't start caring about them until we have a tickle in our throat or, or we sneeze or something, we're like, oh no, it's coming, right? Yeah. And so really just taking a, what what are some things I can add to my day that are, are free, right? Like you can exercise at home body weight, that's free. You can drink the water, hopefully that is free right for you and, and all of those things and so that's that's definitely the second one um the third thing is being your own advocate because a lot of the reason why healthcare is such a scary thing is because we're not taught about it we're not taught how to manage it we're not taught what questions to ask we're not taught what our health insurance plan actually covers and what it doesn't we get a little pamphlet we're like all right that one right we don't know and so really calling whoever your healthcare company is or maybe you, you need to get health care and you've been so scared to do it but just taking the time and saying you know what today i'm going to watch a youtube video on how to get insured if I don't have health insurance right now and start educating ourselves because in that capacity, 
the more we can educate ourselves, a lot of times the less scary it is. And especially um, even if you just call and you ask to speak to a representative and you just say, hey, listen, I'm hoping you could explain a little bit more about my plan. What happens if X, Y, and Z? Can you explain to me what's covered? And um, a lot of times you're going to be able to get that information that's so much more comforting than just sitting in the unknown waiting for, you know, what if something happens? And it is about asking questions. When I was at my poorest and I started going to therapy I all I did was ask I asked my therapist I'm like I can't I don't know I can afford like one session with you mm-hmm. she looked at me and she's like okay well it's usually a hundred and it was a hundred and thirty five dollars I remember she's like I'll bring it down to sixty five dollars mm-hmm. and until you know you can let me know and it was and it was an honor code system and she did it and she funny enough still see her today. She still honors that $65, even when I'm like, I can afford it, which thank you so much, Dr. Fernandez. I love you so much. (laughs) You've saved my mental health. Um, And then, and again, it's not that all doctors will do it. It's it's advocating for yourself. Mm -hmm. The other thing that saved my ass was apps. You're one of the people that Mm -hmm. actually um, opened my mind up. I knew, I knew of a few apps, but like our first sit down session, you gave me like three of them. Are there any now that you've come across that you're like, these are lifesavers? Well, one specifically to healthcare, good RX is free. I use it better than some of my insurance. I know. I'll put that out there. I'm like, it's better than my own insurance. Just recently there was, um, we looked up good RX. It was going to be like $50 for something with our insurance. And we looked up a good RX code and it was $9. If just with GoodRx. And for those of you listening, it's a free app. Go to your app store, download GoodRx. You literally, when you go to pull up, they you will tell- You don't have to have any other insurance. You don't have to have any insurance. Yeah. You pull up, you write, you type in the the prescription, whatever you're getting, mm-hmm. and it will literally pop up and be like, here's your code. You add it, you show them, they scan it, boom, done. Like and that. they give you CVS, they give you Walgreens, yes. they give you Costco. It's as easy as is, the commercial makes it out to be. It yeah. truly I is. Like, what? Yeah. This has got to be a gift. I, there, where's the catch here, yeah. right? Where's the catch? So that's a great one when it comes to healthcare of, but again, so it, it, it's, it comes down to people are, it's a topic of so much fear and so much like, well, I don't know what to say for the good or X. Like, what if I, what if I don't know how to use the code? Can I ask it? And, and so people stay silent and it's, mm-hmm. it's the silence that keeps people in that cycle so often. I mean, obviously there's so many other things that, you know, keep people in that, in that cycle, but that's one thing that we, you know, you can really, really, really empower yourself. And, um, I always say like, you know, take one, pass it down. As soon as you start getting comfortable advocating for yourself, be powerful enough to start advocating for somebody else because there's somebody out there else out there who needs it. So like for, you know, let's say you finally, you like, oh, you're like, okay, I'm gonna use GoodRx myself. You use it. Make sure your grandma's using it, right? Mm-hmm. Call in with somebody else. And, um, th- you know, that is how we we really grow collectively is that you don't just, once you get a seat at the table, you have to invite somebody, bring somebody else in um, so we can, you know, teach education since I wish this stuff was taught in schools. We were just talking about this yesterday when we were flying. I was like, gosh, I get, I still get some anxiety flying. I never flew growing up. Like the first time I really flew was as an adult and the airport stresses me out because I'm like, what if I do the wrong thing? What, what if I don't have the document? And I'm like, why isn't this taught in schools? Like what happens? Why are we not taught how to manage things like very adult things that we should know? Like changing your last name. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) there's so much freaking paperwork. Good luck to you. (laughs) Oh my God. I mean, I wish there was like a handbook, but it, it is a pain in the freaking ass my husband a year and a half into marriage was like do you love me yeah do you want my name i'll, I'll have to You'll spend <clears throat> my money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'll have yeah. to give you this um i forget I, I i wish i could think of it off the top but this is a great app maybe we can put it in the show notes or something but it is this service i think it's called like mid- it's marriage it's something like a marriage like uh it, it, there's one for like if you get married and it tells yes. you like seven steps but there's like, there's yeah. this new upgraded one where you pay like a hundred dollars yeah and they mail you every single thing and you and it just has a, a piece of paper where you sign, you sign everything, you mail it back and they get your a new passport for you, a new driver's license, everything that you need, they do it for you. And apparently you pay like a hundred. I've never used it yet. I did. The only caveat to that is if you move, Oh my Lord, we moved, like we got married yeah. and then it's so, the change of address, man. Mm. Oh, The change of address Ooh. is just as big a pain in the ass as the change of the last name. Yeah, that is but, a hard one. But I will tell you, right. 
your husband will be very happy when you go from Elise to yeah. God, unless you wait a year and a half, right? Go unless and then you're gonna go. Then then he's gonna look at you and be like, whatever, woman. <laughs> so I I want to know. Um, a lot of things shifted in me when I got married. Mm -hmm. um, so many things. Um, God, I, I mean, like, it started out with just um, the freedom of just, like, not giving a fuck anymore. Because yeah. I was like, yeah, I found my person. Like, I, I just don't care. There are things that I think, you know, where, like, you have your true north. And you being somebody who, you know, has made a name for herself of talking about money, mm -hmm. you having a career in business and knowing sales very well, well. What has changed in your work course um, in knowing each other? What's been strengthened? And when do you know that being in a couple sometimes um, you can't, like what, what are you not as emboldened about? Like, you know, when, you, when you're on your own, you kind of just yeah. fucking do whatever you yeah. want. But talk to me a little bit about your career path. What has changed in your viewpoints with money um, and, 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 and what you do with work? But then also um, where you've softened a little bit. Yeah. So she is the guru in the finances. And I have learned so much and obviously uh, as i come into this industry I, I continue to learn more but she's the creative behind behind the guides and and the information i'm how do we scale the business um but with that i have gone from money comes in money goes out when i started making good money out of college it was like it was just going out i was yeah. just pay, barely paying my bills i was listening to, or i was living at my parents um and so i was very very with finances uh, and it created a lot of that imposter syndrome and um, I, I, I lacked confidence because of that and as I met Chloe she never really put a lot of pressure on me to to change my lifestyle right away it was more like I'm doing me like you were saying um, when when you were single I'm doing me and as she started to share some of those wins with me and she started I started to see her bank account grow and the things that it enabled her to do, I just kind of came on board with that. She I, never I said, watch me or join me. And <laughs> she never gave me like um, an ultimatum where I had to, to change certain things. It just kind of happened. And I tell um, people that when I'm on calls with them all the time, and generally it's the wife, wife or girlfriend. And they're like, my husband just doesn't want to talk about finances. He hates it. He's not passionate about it. He just wants to spend money. He likes to hunt or ride motocross whatever um very specific example. i had that call well, recently my, That's my, my husband, I, I thought you were going to say motorcycles my husband has motorcycles. two of them and i'm like what can someone talk to him about how many motorcycles he needs <laughs> deeper than money come to me do it go ahead um and so what i say to them is well why don't you change your habits and and the way you handle money and and he'll come along like share your wins with him and celebrate with him don't put him such in such an ultimatum where it makes him uncomfortable because yeah. he doesn't like it already. So maybe take a different approach. Don't mm -hmm. corner him um, and, and, you know, kind of make him feel uncomfortable about comfortable about that. But also don't wait. Don't wait. We have a lot of women who say like, I'm going to oh, wait yeah, until exactly, my husband's exactly. on board to change my, my finances. And we always say like, I, I tell women like, you got to get on the rocket ship. He'll join you. He's going to join you. But if you just stay there, you're going to have the same results in a year and five years and 10 years. And, and that's a big thing that that I did is I was I, I would talk to him and be like, hey, you want to budget with me? He'd be like, nope. I'm like, all right, well, I'm still going to do it. And he knew that I was I was going to continue on this path. And and I think it, the competitive side of him kind of was like, wait a second, like she's getting these wins okay he'd start being like okay now tell me a little bit about this or like oh i might do that a little bit that's where we balance each other in our personal life very well now because i'm still more of a spender than she is mm -hmm. and you know now that we're, we're doing well it's fun um to i guess have that good balance of okay we're not going to eat out every night but we're going to go out more than we used to and we're going to go to target and spend more than we used to and travel more than we used to um because we wanted to make those sacrifices in the first couple years. Mm -hmm. And we were on the same page about that eventually. Um, th so we could live a life that others may not to down the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I tell people all the time. Yes, 
you need to make, take that first step in getting your shit figured out and he'll come along. And if he doesn't, then we'll have a different conversation down the road. I'm not going to say that's, that's going to work every single time that he's just going to come on and everything's going to be perfect. There's going to be tough conversations. We had some tough conversations along the way, but, um, we, we truly just kind of molded into this, what we are now, um, because she led the way and, and I, it was partly because I'm very competitive and I didn't, um, like having zeros in my bank account, but, <laughs> yeah. um, it's interesting. You guys um, are on a precipice, I think, of something that's never really been done before um, with finances. Um, because, you know, usually the stereotype is what? The breadwinner is the man mm -hmm. and his little wife gets to go spend some of his paycheck. And, you know, she does her wifely duties and she's very sweet and demure and she'll speak to the finances only when maybe he's done something mm. naughty. But then you flip the script and then it becomes what I think is almost even more dangerous for relationships is this ro role reversal. So many role reversals have happened in such a short amount of time where now a woman who is smart with her money can come across as a ball breaking bitch who's mm -hmm. like, I'm in the fucking power. These are the pants wearing here. Yeah. Here's my little emasculated man. Um, it's tough. It's very tough. And it and and there's always this exchange of power because money it's it's undeniable. It makes life easier. Mm -hmm. So whoever is is bringing the money in is helping kind of pad what can is right now a freaking difficult world to live in as just as it is. Mm -hmm. But then if you don't have money coming in, I think that's where the balance of power can really lead to some bad decision making. Mm -hmm. Can you two speak a little bit about your successes as a couple, but also when you felt like maybe you felt like the ball breaking bitch and maybe yeah. you felt like, well, I feel the pressure to have to be this emasculate, this masculine man. Um, can you talk to that? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't want to talk about it. They want to just play like, we got it all figured out. Oh, you know? no. Yeah. And yeah. that's one of our favorite things to do is really like pull back the curtain and <laughs> tell about all the times we failed or all the times. And I get this question so often. And, and when we announced. It kind of makes me mad how often you get this the, question. In the DMs, um, when we announced it, it was like I had f a couple friends who were like, Oh, so she wears the pants and the and or how do you work for your wife and how you like how do you take a back seat and it's like you know I'm, I'm sad that it's you view it that way we don't view it that way mm -hmm. and we don't feel that way um yes she's the boss of the company but it's at the same time i feel like i you know we both we're both leaders of the company at this point she started she built it it's hers right yeah. um but i, I I almost want to say like, you know, well, we don't live in 1920s anymore or whatever. <laughs> like your wife can be the breadwinner. She can be in a powerful position. But at the same time, like you were just saying, it doesn't have, he doesn't, doesn't I don't have, have to be in the opposite yeah. position. It doesn't yeah. make you any less of a man. <clears throat> and what pisses me off right now is there is this movement. Um, and again, I, I, I definitely think it's falling heavily on white men that you need to kowtow. You mm -hmm. fucked up, man. You know, you, you've you been, you, you've put women down. You've put different races down. And I feel like right now a lot of men are being put in this box of, You've got to you've got to support your girl. You need to know how to shut up. And and it's it's also tough because then it puts the woman in that position of, oh, honey, yeah. you're so amazing. And that doesn't feel good either. Yeah. So how how is it for you? Because I, I, I will say as my general impression of you, when I first met you, I was like, wow, she, she is a powerhouse. But then when I saw him walk in with you to, to my event, I was like, okay, this is a man who definitely can handle her. Yeah. But I would think, um, I would think there are times where like, do you feel that need to soften ever? Totally. And, and I think there's this like weird s struggle that I feel like we get, but other people put on us a lot. Like mm -hmm. 
we love both being powerful. Like we love that. And there are times where it fluctuates. Like we, we always joke with each other that we never give up on the same day, right? There's days where I'm just like, this is not working. I'm so frustrated. I just want to give up on this. And Shay's like, babe, you got this. Like, let's talk about how can I, what can I take off your plate? How can I help you? And there's days when Shay's like, oh my, I'm so overwhelmed. Like, I just like need a minute. And I'm like, I'm that like rock for him. Right. And so that's how we roll. And that's how it's like always work for us where we've never felt like I need to be less powerful so he can be powerful. And he, I, I would, I don't want to speak for you, but I don't think he's ever felt like I need to be less powerful so she can be powerful. But instead we just have this narrative that we, we both get to be powerful and we both get to be strong and we both get to, and we both get to be soft too. Like we both get to have both sides of that. And um, so, and we never on the internal side really struggle with that. I mean, we'll have little like bickering things, but we never really struggle with that behind the scenes, but we're asked about it all the time. Or like, this one is always a kicker for me is I get asked all the time, what's going to happen to your business when you have kids? And I'm like, did you ask Shay that too? Shay doesn't get asked that. Nobody asked Shay that. I'm like, so he works at my company and I'm asked that. And, and it's never, a, I mean, people aren't being rude. They're not trying to like intentionally be disrespectful, but and to maybe you don't want kids. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where everyone's always with me. Yeah, it's, it's always that sense of assumption, yeah, assumption yeah, yeah. assuming, and it always makes an ass out of you and me, I, <laughs> I you know? know? And I will so say early on though, early on when I was in that mindset of, I want to drive a nicer car, I want to do yeah. that. I did feel and I've communicated this to you before, uh, pressure to make more money and to be the, the breadwinner and, and oh, yeah. I'm saying to perform now. at a higher level. Yeah. And um, I, I think there's a safe zone with that type of thinking, right? Where we're both pushing each other to be better. Uh -huh. But then it can go into kind of an area where it, it starts to turn into a, a negative type of thinking. Um, and that's when it gets dangerous of like, well, I want to make more money. So I am the breadwinner. So I look better to people. Mm -hmm. Um, I look better to my family or her parents or whoever, whoever is putting that type of pressure and our families don't do that, but yeah. I'm saying the outside world, it may feel like that sometimes. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's just a relief. I mean, I do it on a day to day basis with my husband where at the end of the day, he's always going to make more money than me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, Maybe I should sp not speak it. Maybe, who knows? Maybe I'll be the next freaking Oprah Winfrey. Oprah's Oprah. Doubt it. But what I love, what I love is knowing that I can look at him and say, yeah, you worked a hard day and you brought, you brought money and I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Um, and be okay with that. I think the hard part is, is that when you feel the lacking mm, is, yeah. is that when you start to compare and feel like, but, but I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And, and you don't see that what you're bringing to the table, yes. it, mm -hmm. it's actually in abundance because, yeah. you know, my husband comes every day off of a day of work and he's like, I wouldn't wor wish this on my worst enemy, what I do some days. And then with me, you know, I get to do this podcast and, and, you know, there's, there's something that is brought into, to, to his, his energy field that just inspires. And he goes out and he's like, if I can keep working to create something, help you create this. And then when I see two couples make a decision to do something together, to me, it's just, it's easy because you know what he brings to your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know that it wouldn't be growing. Totally. If it wasn't, you know, and, 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 and vice versa, you mm -hmm. wouldn't be joining her if Absolutely. she wasn't, you know, and that, I think we need to like chill the fuck out about playing certain roles mm -hmm. and always having to be on the same, like it's good to be beside each other, but we don't have to be identical. No. We never will be. We're never mm -hmm. gonna always bring the same thing to the table. And I think what I already know is you guys are gonna be so happily married because you just said the best piece of advice that was ever given to me. The best piece, of, it was just worded a little different, is there are gonna be days where he loves you a little bit more than you love him. And there are gonna be days where you love him a little more than he loves you. Mm -hmm. And it's a rarity that you both come to the table with equal amounts of that. Maybe on your wedding day, mm -hmm. maybe when you lose a loved one. Um, 
but really it's it's that it's that dance that you do and and the fact that you can recognize that and stay the course is the key to a good marriage mm-hmm. it's key to good finances it's it's the key to everything and i think that that's one thing if you guys are listening now um, if you're going to take anything from this podcast it's it's not about putting Chloe in a role and Shay in a role. It's about looking about how you guys really, you guys do this and you guys should really feel that because I can feel it Mm -hmm. from both of you. It feels, and even the way you talk to each other. I love it when I have couples sit next to each other and they talk to each other and not just answer questions and look me in the eye. It's like, no, I'm going to look to you because you're my partner. Are you guys, are you guys just like, do you ever have moments where you look at each other and you're like, how the hell did we get here? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> in all Cabo, the time. in Cabo. We were, we went a day earlier than our, our two friends that came with us. And um, just to, well, we had an over, or we had a longer flight than them, whatever. So we came the day earlier and we were just sitting, just the two of us overlooking the ocean at our resort, pina coladas in hand. And we're just like, holy shit like this is our life like we didn't have to take pto for this we don't have to feel bad about what we're missing out on we like we love it and so that was amazing right we're just like oh this is so crazy but the best part is on sunday morning we're packing our stuff and we're both like i can't wait to get home and that that's the magic it's not just the we love our lives and we love each other and we're obsessed with each other on vacation but like we were leaving paradise and we were so freaking excited to get home to to our two dogs Isn't to that a be cool in a routine feeling. like to that, that point though is when we were living in Davenport Iowa oh this is cute yeah okay. we were living in a what we thought was awesome apartment <laughs> yeah is it like, yeah, you're you're looking like, back it was a bit of a shack the shit. it was a big shack at the at this point but we were like look at these windows is an old building and we had a shitty landlord and we were like this is awesome we're, like and we're this so we were just happy. getting started and um, you know, making okay money, but it, it wasn't the point. We were just like, this is awesome. This our, is, our we're so night, happy. Our date nights were a, a $5 Domino's pizza. Those were our date yeah. nights. And they, it was a splurge. We would like make a little four and we would have, it was so, we, we, we did with like <laughs> yeah. the covers and we, we just thought we had it made and we were just so happy and grateful and we'd go on walks and we had a huge vision. Like we, we have always had, we, we say BOE to each other all the time, which is build our empire. We say it all the time. Shay bought me a bracelet that says BOE on it. And, um, and so it's not like th- we are like, we made it. This is it. This is all we want. We had these big goals, but we were so happy and we always joke now that looking back, we're like, that's so funny because we didn't live in a nice place. Both of us, I mean, we like we liked our jobs, but we weren't like the happiest ever, but we, we were just so proud of what we had created back then. And I think that's the magic is we're so happy with where we're at, but at the same time, we have this big vision for what's to come. Mm-hmm. And we have big goals ahead of us, but again, we're enjoying every process of the way. And yeah. that's what's special is you know looking back in davenport we would we were never at that point well we want a bigger apartment we're really unhappy i mean we we again we had goals of growing a business and doing things but as we look back on each step we're like we're really proud of that is we've done it together and we've been very happy at each step and i know we have a long way to go and we've only done it a couple years but um it's cool to to be pretty content with where we're at but also with with big big goals ahead yeah it's enjoying the moment yeah it's enjoying the moment it's not getting comfortable in the moment just, mm-hmm. just enjoying it absolutely so as i wrap this up i'm always curious there's a couple questions i like to ask couples um because i think if anything um love is a crazy thing and it's something everybody wants but i also think people want to know like what's the secret sauce and there's no real secret sauce but there are feelings and there are moments. So Shay, when did you know that you were going to make Chloe Elise your wife? Like how, what was that moment where you're like, God, she's got to, she's got to be with me. I want to grow old with her. So looking back at our first date, I left that day and I was like, she's beautiful, but I didn't stop laughing the whole time. I was like, she's freaking hilarious. And then as we kept texting and growing a little bit, um, I, we joke, she said, I love you first to me, but I, I said, well, I felt it before. Like I I wanted to say it before then. It doesn't count. He always says she said it first. I'm just saying, so I, I felt it very quickly 
And one of the big reasons is just because I, I loved her, but she was also my best friend and she just made me laugh and it was just fun all the time. And um, we went through some tough things early on and she was just my rock, never wavered, never once um, as we we're going through those things like, you know, how can I learn more and help you through those things? It was never, and this was early on, like the first year. It was never how, you know, well, I don't know if, you know, if, if I can do this or whatever. It was like, how can I learn more about that and help you through those times? And so I, I would just say those couple of things is she's never wavered and always been my, by my side. And just the amount of fun that we had early on. Oh. Um, so I, I, and I felt that right away, like right away. So Chloe, my question to you is a little different. You strike me, uh, you, you just have, you exude independence that you can do it all on your own. But I know that no matter how much you can take care of yourself, at the end of the day, the best feeling in the world is to feel safe and and have that that feeling of home in someone. How does he how does he fit the bill? How does he make you feel safe? How is he your home? Oh my gosh. Um so also I'll talk about when we first met both of us, we joke that this we never this was like the best thing that we never wanted. Both of us on our first date said, just so you know, I, I really am not looking for anything serious. He said the same thing to me and we're like, awesome, there's no pressure. We're just gonna like hang out. And it was just very natural. And so I, I think that was one of the big the big things is that in the past, feeling safe and feeling home had always felt like a forced feeling. Like I was looking for a home. I, you know, I was like out like, will you make me feel safe? Are you going to make me feel safe? Are you going to make me feel safe? And this was just something I'd never experienced where it, I wasn't looking for it. It just like found me. And, um, you know, early on, Shay mentioned this, but we, we just went through really, really, really hard stuff early on in our relationship. And it was like, we were in like bad times and in those bad times I just I felt so safe and it was like this knowing that even when it even when things are hard and and even when things are good like this is the person that I, I I'm down to to do it all with and so um and since then he's just he's such a like you know, such a rock and such a caretaker for everything that, um, you know, I definitely, I, I consider myself super independent, but, um, th there's a, there's a poem by Rupi, Rupi Kapoor, I think, um, is how you say it. And it says like, um, I do not want to have you to fill the empty parts of me. I want to be so full on my own that, um, I, or I want to be so full on my own. I can light up the whole city because the two of us together could set it on fire, something like that. It's very similar. And so that was, that was the big thing is, is feeling enough yourself and then finding somebody who just like makes everything, everything better. And that was him. Yeah. It's only fair. You know, I think, uh, when you're always asking for more and you have an empty cup, it's like you want that. You want to feel that you are giving from a full cup. And I think in relationships, you know when you're ready, when, and, and I, I wish I could speak to it because I met my husband when I was very depleted and very empty. Um, he, he went through a tough time too. And we, we went through the tough times together with empty cups and we were so dry and so thirsty. And usually that doesn't work. It really, it doesn't usually work. The time it does work is when you both figure out like, okay, I, I'm going to take the, what is that? The air mask. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give a little bit to you when I can, and mm -hmm. then vice versa. And if you can do it and time it right, that's the thing is the timing. Cause most of the time timing is off and you're forcing the air mask in each other's face and you break up. But mm -hmm. for some, again, it's the dance. It's mm -hmm. like when you're stronger, you help him out and vice versa. Yeah. So I don't know if you're going to take anything today, whether it be tax tips or apps, I, I wish you'd take that tip because honestly, um, yeah, life is, life is a lot deeper than money. And I think that uh, when you really think about how you have brought your material and shared your ideas your your they're not tips it's like a rule-based system that has helped you figure it out um you know it's kind of nice to see who is on you know your guru's team and um she wouldn't be who she is unless she had 
someone like you but beside her to help her fill up her cups on the days where she's like, fuck, where am I going to get it from? It is, um, it was, it was a pleasure sitting down with you. I'm so glad that I now feel like I know you a little better. Um, it's always so funny when you, you meet people and you know, your casual acquaintances, but then, mm -hmm. you know, it's the questions that you ask to really understand the why, the how, the, the, the what's next. And I can't wait to see what's next for the two of you. I, I think, you know, BOE, right? That's what mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. it BOE. <laughs> it's, I, I, I think, uh, more couples should have that as their mantra. Well, same to you. Thank you for having us oh, on. Thank it, you for, for inviting me this time. And definitely. You're I'm going to see you. are truly great at this. Yeah, oh, thank so you. Good. You're thank truly you. great at this. Thank so you. Good. Well, I adore the two of you. And um, you always have two seats in my very warm room. We get a little hot in here when we talk <laughs> in the hot seat about love and relationships. For my viewers and listeners, um, I always like to kind of pass off to you. Where can people get more of you? Just a reminder. I mean, you've got your podcast, Deeper Than Money, but then um, can you remind them of the website and uh, what you have next? For sure. For sure. So if you search Deeper Than Money on any platform, any platform, you'll find us. Um, and honestly, one of the biggest things that we're really working on is just pumping out more free content. That is like our our, our big goal for the end of the year and for big quarter one of next year is giving so many free resources out. And so if you're looking for free resources, please go go find us on Instagram at deeper.than.money. Um, our website is www.deeper-than-money.com and we have so much coming and don't forget um, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> I love we're doing, it. Some, we're doing some goofy dances, <laughs> learning some stuff. TikTok is so uh, it's so hard. It's I I genuinely feel for the first time like an old person trying to find an app. I can remember my parents or other people saying, how do you use Instagram? And I'm like, how do you not get it? Yeah. And now I'm like, I'm an old person. I'm trying to learn how You've to use be these like a new film director. I for know TikTok. it's crazy. And so we're, we're and just to be a ventriloquist. I know. I mean, I'm a, I'm trying to match my lips up. I'm it's, like, no. forget it's it. so hard. So, <laughs> but we're having fun. We're doing a bunch of stuff. Um, and we have some new hires. I think Shay mentioned that earlier that are coming in and really going to help us expand on, on our platforms again, to bring more free content. And so oh. wherever you're looking for, whatever, whatever mode of content that you like to consume video blog, um, just like challenges, we have it all go check it out. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I'm going to have to get more mics for team deeper than money. Yes. I love so. it. I love it growing. And, you know, especially during this time. Um, yeah, Thanksgiving will be a good year for you. This I mean, oddly enough, it's weird to 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 say I've been blessed this year, but it's good to notice it and mm -hmm. to say thank you mm -hmm. and to just Absolutely. pay it forward. So keep doing what you're doing. The free resources are like, I mean, it's so generous that you do it because you you give good content. You give good content, girl. Thank you. Uh, other than that, uh, I could go on and on and on, but I have to wrap this up for now because I'm sweating profusely I'm beneath this wonderful sweater from the clothes rack. Um, plug there to Alina <laughs> and company. But we are going to wrap it up. And if you like this episode, please like and subscribe because that's the only way that I'm going to be getting to do more of this is if I have people who are watching and following to do it right now. Thank you so much. Much love from the Seraphine podcast and see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.